So I want to just uh, let you all know that I'm going to make this presentation, the material accompanying the presentation, all of the budget content with the updated figures will be posted to the town website uh, as a supplement to this, or this is really a supplement to that. And I'll note that this year's presentation is a little bit different than last year's format. Um, part I'm sharing figures in just a different way. Um, and part of what I want to share is my sense of the context of the proposed FY23 budget as an investment in future planning for Gray. Like many of the things that I present for your consideration, this budget was prepared with help and support from my coworkers on town staff. And I especially want to thank Katie Jewell for her work in bringing a lot of information together into a concise and understandable budget package. But as you can see on my presentation, many people have touched this and I'm grateful to them for their um, accuracy in general and enthusiasm uh, for getting uh, solid budget proposals to you. I put some quick facts together about the budget. I, I hope that it comes as a relief to everyone to know that <laughs> Uh, the proposed mill rate is unchanged at the same level of last year's mill rate, 14.61. You actually approved a mill rate of 14.75 last year, but then we brought it down due to increases in revenue that came in, uh, which was a welcome adjustment for everyone. Uh, but we're very pleased to be able to keep uh, level at that mill rate into next year in this proposal. The property tax on an average gray home valued at $352,500 will be $5,150. That's for an average home. That's actually the median value uh, from the Maine State <coughs> Housing Authority for, for gray, which we feel to be as the most accurate and pre precise figure available. Out of the appropriations for uh, uh, this year's budget, it's important for everyone to know that the town of Gray is just one of the appropriations. There's also an appropriation for the school district, MSAD 15. There's an appropriation, we count an appropriation for the sheltered TIF value, uh, which is actually a benefit to the town because of the way that it's counted toward our share of county and school funds. Uh, and there's also the county tax. And I've put the percentage of the budget that each of those represents uh, in there, I just want to point out that 69% of the tax bill to property taxpayers is for uses other than municipal services and municipal government. 66% of that tax bill is out of the town council or the town staff's control entirely. And as we look at the trend of appropriations over time, you can see that there have been substantial cost increase, increases outside of the municipal budget. And I think it's reasonable to expect that the costs of labor, equipment, and supplies will continue to increase over time into the future. I've included the same figures uh, for anyone who prefers to see them in a table format rather than uh, on a line chart. But uh, just to go back, I think you, you can see a pretty obvious trend in the line chart as to where things have gone. In the proposed town budget, uh, I've broken it down by department and I, I find that these uh, budget percentages, the, the pieces of the pie uh, are sliced fairly typically for a municipality of our size, except perhaps under the level of funding I would recommend for economic development going into future years. And I'll explain more about that part of my presentation. I'll also note that the recreation department budget is managed separately in an enterprise account, so it does not show up in the town budget. And I'll also speak a little bit going forward about the cost of public safety uh, and some proposed increases this year and just expectations about uh, the future on that as well. Again, this is a tabulated version of the pie chart for anyone who cares to see it this way. <clears throat> um, as we, just again to revisit on public safety, as we propose to add staff to cover the increasing demand in gray, um, this year's proposal starts with a couple of positions. 
um, there's there's some awareness that gray is growing and that the, the demand on our full-time fire and EMS uh, employees is growing as we're having less response from uh, our call firefighters. This year's budget draws from capital reserves to help offset capital improvement investments. We've experienced increased costs for goods and services, such as tipping fees, road salt, road maintenance, and water supply. We've also added a few projects like a parking lot for a new outdoor recreation area that uh, is a collaboration with the Royal River uh, Conservation Trust. And we've also proposed an emergency contingency fund for disasters like we experienced from COVID and from the town hall flooding, not once, but twice. And we have maintained the funding for the separation payouts for employees uh, when they leave the, the town and also the funding for the senior properties, senior tax assistance program, excuse me. So that's just a quick summary of the 13 or so items that are on the major expense increase chart. And these are expenses that increase by over $10,000 uh, roughly. Major budget decreases were, expense decreases were smaller, but I think are also notable in what they reflect, which is some expected changes and fluctuations in the cost of goods and services from year to year. Things can move around a little bit. For example, with the county sheriff's contract, uh, we had a change in our assumptions about receiving the uh, school resource officer's vehicle at the end of its service life. We usually roll those into uh, town service. We expected it this year. It's going to be pushed out to next year because it has hit the service years, but it hasn't hit the mileage. So they're electing to retain it. <clears throat> one decrease that we made in this proposal versus the last one that you received from uh, town staff is that we have removed the proposed pump or tanker vehicle for public safety due to a large price increase since the original proposed price. Instead of doing that this year, we will acquire another command. We are proposing to acquire, acquire another command vehicle. We were going to use the SRO vehicle that got backed out. So we, we public safety has asked for a vehicle for the um, chief and assistant chief to respond to uh, uh, incidents. And the plan is to sell one of the fire engines, but to keep the current tanker uh, uh, until further consideration in a future budget. Other notable expenses that I uh, listed from the budget review that my analysis is the fluctuation in gas and diesel costs. We had significantly decreased that in our initial projections, uh, but due to the unrest in uh, Ukraine, uh, and, and the global markets for oil and natural gas, it's really hard to tell. We are trying to lock in prices as best we can. We've gotten some favorable rates for heating gas, uh, thanks to again to Katie uh, for digging those up. We were uh, given a proposal from our legal services firm for a, a sort of, say a modest increase in their fees. And at that time, um, you all asked me to uh, put out an RFP for legal services because it's been a while since we've done that. And that seems like a reasonable thing to do. So I did issue that RFP. Uh, and we're, the response deadline, I believe, is next Friday, or, or yes. So uh, we'll continue to pursue that, but I, I expect that a rate increase for most services is to be expected in this year's or next year's budget. We've also included a wage adjustment for part-time and seasonal employees um, up to a minimum of 1750 for uh, staff, except for in the um, kids club staff, that's on a different budget but all other part-time staff will be moved up to that minimum rate. Because of uh, other wage adjustments that I'll get into, the retirement fund matches have gone up some. We have a cost of living adjustment uh, in this year's budget of 2%, positive 2%. Uh, not, not a, that's not a minus, it's a dash. And we've also instituted in this year's budget a performance-based wage adjustment that uh, offers up to an additional 2% based on individual employees' goals and how those goals help to achieve 
department and town level goals that were also set uh, for all departments. Part of our long-term investments in recruitment, retention, and professional development are demonstrated in those wage adjustments and the performance-based wage adjustment that we've proposed for next year. Moving to capital budget, and I haven't gone into a detailed analysis other than the high, the high numbers about capital improvement planning. We can talk about that, but I think that those um, chart of accounts really explain themselves in a lot of ways. Um, some of our capital budget expenses related to long-term facility planning. The buildings and grounds director um, contracted Port City Architecture to conduct a facility use study on all town buildings. Uh, there are some, there's numerous suggestions for uh, immediate and longer term enhancements to those buildings. One of those suggestions was to move the buildings and grounds department out of the maintenance building facility that they're in, which doesn't exactly meet their needs, uh, into the village station building, which is currently a fire station, uh, largely for call firefighters. We found that the response for, and this is no, this is no like casting no shade at anyone in saying this. The numbers are just that. Uh, the call response has been a bit lower. Our full-time firefighters have been responding to more calls. EMT have been responding to more calls. And so the proposal is to move and consolidate fire and EMS into Central Station, free up the Village Station building, move buildings and grounds to that building, we have other ideas about how to use the maintenance building to support the daycare and kids club programs. Uh, and as part of that, we're gonna, those and other recommendations to CIP are in, or to capital improvements for facilities are in your CIP budget. Um, so as part of this, I've, I've mentioned this a couple of times, but as part of this larger uh, facilities use plan, we're also proposing to add two firefighter uh, EMT or paramedic staff to help with the increased call volume. Uh, and this is part of the retention program as well. We want to avoid burnout. We want to avoid turnover because we want to invest in town staff and keep folks who we are working with and training and investing uh, in our relationship with over the longer haul. So again, we're planning on um, putting one of the engines that we have on the market, uh, be, largely because it's not rolling very frequently and because if we do keep it, we would not have space for it in any of our buildings. Any questions so far? Okay, I can ask for questions again at the end. Uh, we have uh, one of the budget lines is a pretty sharp increase in wage adjustments from last year's figure of 80,000, which was just for a 2% COLA. The new number is uh, $215,000. That includes a wage adjustment for, um, I'd say about two thirds of town employees based on a study that we did and that council has been reviewing at your meetings, uh, demonstrating that the market uh, the median pay for some of those positions is a little different than where we are right now. That figure also includes the COLA and the performance based. Um, I am excited about the proposals that we've made for um, attracting and retaining uh, the, the best uh, people we can get for the positions that we have. I know that gray uh, citizens appreciate the services that are provided in the general level of professionalism of town staff. We wanna to continue to invest in that and acknowledge that uh, training needs, um, continuity planning needs, cross training needs. And frankly, just knowing that there are other people in the office who can cover you so you can take a vacation and not have to take your phone or worry about things that are going on are all again, ways to keep people engaged, reduce burnout, protect the town from the losses of key employees when they do decide to move on by making sure that there are other people are being trained into a secession plan uh, that, that gives people a career track, protects the town from disruptions, and generally acknowledges, again, that the forces of the market are uh, require some corrections from time to time in our pay. 
We have had some pretty substantial interruptions in business continuity in the last year uh, and in the level of service that we would like to provide. Uh, so uh, I feel that this is a, a strong and good recommendation. Uh, so far, I uh, understand that council has supported it, which I appreciate. The wage increase will be uh, conducted as proposed, will be conducted over a two year period. Um, and so we'll continue to talk about that going into FY24. Um, along with the wage adjustments, uh, we have proposed to convert the HR administrator position, which is sort of part time between two other duties and responsibilities into an HR director position with more focus on administering a professional development and skills training program to meet those cross training and contingency planning goals starting into next year and continuing into subsequent years. On the revenue side, uh, I've listed the major changes over $10,000 plus the clerk's fees for auto registrations. Um, these increases include a transfer of Route 100 TIF funds for design and planning for Yarmouth Road, Route 100 or 202, uh, and the Great Village, uh, the whole corner, that whole Shaker Road, um, Brown Street, Main Street area, uh, and the use of unassigned fund balance for capital investments for the town. I want to note that the state has fully restored revenue sharing to main municipalities, finally meeting their legal obligation to towns like Gray. And that legal obligation dates back to 1970, but in recent years has not been honored generally to the detriment of local property taxpayers. So from my perspective, every dollar of reduction that came out of the state shorting revenue sharing ended up being paid by local taxpayers uh, to compensate, or it meant that the quality of service or the level of long-term investment and in capital that the town could have otherwise made was deferred, which in the long run actually cost us more. So I'm really pleased that revenue sharing has been restored and hope that it stays that way uh, into the future. <clears throat> Compared to FY23, you'll note that um, there are some significant changes in how we're using uh, revenue. Uh, Revenue from excise and what have you under miscellaneous revenue has gone up substantially, but so also has the, the proposed use of unassigned fund balance and that Route 100 transfer. And this is again to support capital investments and planning investments that uh, we believe will help to sustain the town in the long run. Part of what that means is addressing the LD1 uh, cap that. Um, the town of Gray has in the past put this forward to voters. It will be on the warrant article as a separate question from uh, the budget itself. Um, the cap, I just want to point out that the cap only applies to the town's portion of the budget appropriation, which to refer back to my earlier slide is only 31% of the tax bill. And so if this LD1 is used as a way to try to control spending, it's just the barn door is open for 69% of the spending that goes to the property taxpayer. It's not a very effective way of, of controlling that. And at this time, I don't know, and nobody I have asked knows where we're supposed to send the LD1 report once we fill it out. Um, I don't, I've talked to other town managers and they fill out the paperwork, but it's not on the warrant and they don't send it anywhere because there's just no address. Uh, so again, it, as a measure of long-term fiscal responsibility and the value of the investments we've proposed, I feel LD1 is not a very good measure. Uh, in fact, we had already exceeded LD1 coming into this year's budget due to the restored uh, state revenue sharing. So I'm happy to answer any questions anyone might have about that uh, as you continue with the budget discussion and the development of the warrant articles. <clears throat> the town's appropriation has increased proportionally over time, uh, even if it's not as significant as the school's appropriation, uh, which is currently twice as much. But what that suggests is that we should explore long-term planning and investment strategies for the town 
to at least keep our portion of the tax appropriation affordable to great citizens. And I put some, just some quick charts together to try to illustrate uh, this point. Um, we had a valuation, Gray had a valuation uh, reval in FY28, FY18, 19 period. There was a big jump in value of the tax base from 18 to 19. So I'm only working from four years worth of data. Uh, otherwise it would really skew the line. But based on the last four years, Gray's um, property valuation has resulted in roughly a $340,000 per year increase in tax revenue, which is where, you know, sort of offset some of the increases in um, the budgets, the expense budgets. However, I hope that this chart is easy enough to read. I've put some trend lines on here, and this wasn't in your packet council. This is something that I've been trying to work out. The town portion alone, so the bottom line is year to year increases in revenue based on property tax. The next line up is how much the town's budget in, has increased over time. That's just a trend. And I want to put a pin on this because this can be a little this can be a little confusing or misunderstood. I'm going to come back to this. And then the top line is the total portion of tax commitment increase for including the school and, and the county. This does not uh, include that the town has other sources of revenue, going back to that other chart, like excise tax and all that stuff. So I'm not saying we're spending more than we're making. I'm just suggesting that we're on a trend of an increase there. And the only way to sustain that is either to uh, generate more revenue or reduce expenses. And that's part of the rationale for why we're making the following suggestions about preparing for Gray's future. Because we want to invest in sustainable and fiscally responsible town government. So our reorganization goals include, as I said before, um, creating a position for a director of human resources, enhancing our professional development and training support for all town staff. We're gonna make some strategic recommendations per department on um, skills acquisition, uh, required trainings, um, professional development and uh, leadership development for people in leadership roles in different departments. Uh, based on last year's uh, town warrant, we are going to hire a town clerk. The town clerk will be a department head level position that will take on some of the roles and responsibilities that the town manager's office has been doing. It will also relieve the finance director from the administration of the town clerk's office, which will free that person up uh, to have more time to focus on budgeting, reporting, um, what have you. We're proposing to move the IT department and communications department management over to the library and have the library director and a, a new position and assistant library director manage, um, basically be the department head manager for those departments. Uh, the staff who works in that department are very competent and they have very like uh, technical skill sets, but we wanna continue to work on developing, again, backup, uh, management understanding for continuity planning, coverage for vacations and time off uh, so that everybody has a better work experience and the town has more protection from interruptions and issues with uh, business continuity. Uh, we've proposed two new full-time firefighter EMT uh, employees um, to help respond to the higher call volume. The number of incidences of multiple calls where one ambulance is already out and we get another call for another ambulance and sometimes we need to juggle staff to respond to those, uh, for example. Um, and uh, understanding that in the current market, reliance on our valued uh, partners in per diem and call company responders, just statistically we're seeing the entire state, the entire nation is seeing a drop off of that and more reliance on full-time uh, employees. Lastly, the continuity planning work. Uh, this is partly comes out of work in the uh, uh, continuity planning for emergency management. 
but it really speaks to a bigger, a bigger question of what are the services that we provide? What are the essential things we need to continue those services in the event of an incident? And how does that inform the way that we do training of assistants, foremen, um, officers, uh, uh, so that they can rise to, to when the, or they can meet the need when it arises? We're also working on implementing the comprehensive plan. Uh, we have uh, investments that we're proposing to help Gray become the most attractive environment for new business and real estate investment in greater Portland area, if not the whole state. That's going to require partnership with um, outsourced contractors uh, who are experts in various areas of the planning field to supplement our planners. Uh, time and uh, many different things that they're working on on a daily basis. We're currently engaged with DOT, Maine uh, Turnpike Authority, GPCOG, Cumberland County Soil and Water Conservation, Royal River Conservation Trust, and other partners on a community economic development planning strategy. And I hope that these projects will help attract the property tax growth and maintain the assets that Gray has to help carry the future costs of running the local government and providing public services. So in summary, very pleased to report that there will be no increase in the mill rate for this year. Uh, I'm going to recognize that LD1 uh, is in part at least due to the good news of the restored state revenue sharing money. Um, I hope that voters will weigh and consider the value of LD1 as a measure of growth um, versus other factors. And just to realize that fiscal responsibility for us means planning and recognizing that there are expenses that the town has that we need to find ways to cover in order to provide the same level of safety and service that uh, great citizens appreciate and enjoy. That is the recommendation really underlying all of the proposed um, capital improvement and staffing budget changes that I have presented to you, and I thank you for the probably additional time to make my presentation today, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much, Nate, and uh, for all those watching, uh, the council is very aware of all of these items because we've been spending a lot of time together in uh, about 10 budget workshops going through the budget, uh, but tonight is really for the manager to speak to our residents uh, and to share the final budget, so appreciate the uh, presentation, Nate, 